We are now live. Rosie, would you like to take us away? Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in a minute or two. Are we still letting people into the room? Yes, everyone should be at a minute at this point. All right, let's get started as we have so much to cover. My name is Rosie Stevenson Goodnight. I'm based in California. I've been a trustee since 2021, and I'm currently the chair of the board's Talent and Culture Committee. Welcome to all of you to this open conversation with the trustees. It's hosted by the Community Affairs Committee. The goal of this call is to have an open channel of communication between the Board of Trustees and the Wikimedia communities. It's so that we have a shared understanding and accountability. As usual, this will be a 90 minute call with updates, followed by Q&A questions and answers on each topic and then an open Q&A session at the end. We have a very full agenda. This was gonna include asking for additional community feedback about the foundation's annual plan, as well as engagement in it so far, themes and what we heard, outcomes, what's next. We have a few questions that were pre-submitted related to the foundation's Form 990, which was published last week. As a reminder, this is an informational tax form that, along with other financial disclosures, is part of the organization's practices around transparency and the commitment to increased openness. We'll take those questions along with annual plan questions. And then something new, Wiki Celebrate, a new way we're elevating and celebrating extraordinary Wikimedians and how you can be a part of it. Thanks everyone for being here today. I'm excited to talk about these updates with you. Just remember these conversations happen once every quarter and the next opportunity is going to be in person at Wikimania in Singapore in August. And after that, another online happening in November. Instead of piling on the introductions at the start this time, I'll ask everyone to please introduce themselves when it's their turn to speak. I'm gonna pass this over to you, Elena, now. Thanks, Rosie. I'll be the first to introduce myself. Um, my name's Elena Lappin. I am a lead movement communication specialist with the Wikimedia Foundation. I will be helping um, facilitate today's discussion. Let me explain a little bit about how today's going to work. It's going to be totally unsurprising for those of you who have been with us on these calls in the past. Um, but like Rosie mentioned, we have a series of updates that we're going to go through about things that the foundation and the board have been working on together. After each update, there's going to be a question and answer um, short period of time about that particular update. So we'll go updates, Q&A, update, Q&A. And then uh, we'll save about the last 30 minutes of the call for an open Q&A where we can ask any questions that we didn't get to about any of the agenda items um, and also any other questions you might have for the trustees. Um, we'll encourage you to ask any questions you have throughout the call in the Zoom chat and the YouTube chat. Uh, we have people monitoring both of those chats and we'll make sure your questions get asked. If you're here in the Zoom room, and you want to ask a question live, we really encourage that. As always, um, just raise your hand in the Zoom chat. We will add you to the queue and then I will pass you the mic so that you can um, unmute and ask your question directly. We have a handful, like Rosie mentioned, of pre-submitted questions on a couple of different topics today that were sent to us uh, ahead of time. So we're going to be getting to those as we can, trying to intersperse those with the questions that are asked here live. And if there are any questions that we don't get to in today's session, um, we will post those answers on the meta page for today's event. We're also going to post a summary of the call on that meta page. You'll be able to find a recording of this call at the YouTube link that was published. 
um, and also on Commons as soon as we're able to get it up there. And all of that will also be on today's event meta page. Um, this call is covered by the friendly space policy as always. And with that, I will pass it to Vicki and Lorenzo to get the agenda started and see you again when the Q&A begins. Thanks. Uh, hello. My name is Victoria Doronina. I'm a trustee since 2021, and I am opening celebrations and commemoration sessions. So uh, we want to celebrate some of the projects and affiliates that have important milestones this month. Uh, check Wikipedia, turn 20, and a number of other Wikipedia all celebrate birthday, including Japanese, Portuguese, Italian, Indonesian, Swedish, and Spanish. Wikimedians of the Levant and Wikimedia Ukraine celebrate the 8th and 14th anniversaries, respectively. And I want to say that Wikimedia Ukraine is especially close to my Eastern European heart. And I am amazed how they're doing great work while there is a war in the country, for example, uh, recently, they had uh, uh, Wikipedia Loves uh, movements. Uh, so for upcoming events around the movement, we have Wikimedia Hachatson starting tomorrow in Athens, where Mike Peel, our newest uh, community elected trustees, will be joining. The EduWiki conference will take place in Belgrade at the end of the month. Uh, Shani, Rosie, and I will be joining, so I'm looking forward to it. And huge congratulations to everybody who's celebrating and meeting up and having conferences online. Uh, we just had uh, Queer Wikipedia conference, which was a uh, hybrid as well. Uh, Lorenzo. Thank you. My name is Lorenzo Laza. I'm based in Italy and I'm uh, I'm a trustee since uh, 2011, like uh, Victoria and uh, Rosie that uh, I've just, uh, I've just talked. So we want to take uh, a moment to recognize uh, some of the Wikimedians uh, who have passed uh, since our last conversation together. Some of them are Joe Pugh, known as Mr. Impossible on Wiki, uh, worked at the uh, UK National Archives and was involved in the Wikimedia community in the UK, editing uh, Wikidata, English Wikipedia, and Commons uh, since 2011. Glibayo, who was uh, one of the founders uh, of the Wikimedia Baelic, Baelic community. He worked to preserve Balinese uh, heritage by digitizing uh, and dungeoned ancient manuscripts owned by individuals in Bailey. And his work uh, inspired the Wikilaws manuscript initiative. And David Goodman, user DGG, was a member of the English Wikipedia Arbitration Committee, a co-founder of uh, Wikimedia New York City, a co-founder of uh, Wikiconference uh, North America, and a prolific contributor of English Wikipedia with over uh, 300,000 edits. And Daryl Lin, and uh, for, uh, to talk about him, uh, I'll pass uh, to Shani, but knew him better than me. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, Doral was uh, nearly a 20 years Wikimedian. Um, he's one of the founding members of Wikimedia Israel, a longtime board member um, and organizer of Wikimania Haifa that many of you remember. And uh, he's also been quite uh, well known internationally because he's been everywhere, right? Many of you 
um, have known him and have worked with him as part of the steering committee for Wikimania along the years. Um, he founded the coolest projects, every Wikimania, and he's just been doing everything, glam, education. On a personal level, I can share that when I uh, joined in that Wikimania that he organized in 2011, um, he soon became a really good partner. And we've ran countless, countless workshops and talks and courses and collaborations together. So a huge loss, um, like all the previous Wikimedians that were mentioned here today. Um, our hearts are with all the families and all the community members who've lost these people. So condolences and um, we want to celebrate them and just show our gratitude for all of their tireless efforts to bring free knowledge to the world. Um, so thank you from all of us to all of them and may they rest in peace. Um, I will move now to some board updates before handing on to Nat, who will continue with the agenda. So some board updates. Um, and I didn't introduce myself properly. So hello, everyone. My name is Shani Evenstein Sigalov. I'm the vice chair of the board of trustees and the chair for the community affairs committee. Um, since our last conversation, the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees met in person in New York City um, between March 8 to 11. The official Board of Trustees meeting was held on March 9th. We handled various board business issues, such as approving the December meeting minutes and approving an update to the Talent and Culture Committee uh, composition, which you've already heard about. We have now Rosie um, to chair this committee. And this is also a good opportunity to thank Raju Narisetti, who is also with us today, who chaired this committee before her. The board also approved the Universal Code of Conduct um, Enforcement Guidelines, which was a milestone that many of us have been looking for, forward to. And it's finally happening. It's not complete yet. As many of you have heard, it's an iterative, it's gonna be an iterative process and now there's gonna be a committee, but we are stepping, we are, these are important steps in the right directions. During this meeting, we also had, um, some time that we spent with the Movement Charter Drafting Committee members, as well as with the Wikimedia Endowment Board. Now, that was actually the first time that these two boards met together in this constellation, and it was a really good move that we'll try to continue uh, making in, in the future. Um, our next Board of Trustees meeting will be virtual, a virtual one in June. Some trustees have also traveled to movement uh, events. So Lorenzo and Luis attended um, the Iberoconf in February and Raju and uh, Lorenzo joined Wiki Conference in India in April. And as Vicky told you, next week, we're all, um, some of us are going to be in Serbia for the Wiki in Education Conference. Um, the last portion of the March board meeting was dedicated to the annual planning process and the strategic discussions. And this is a good point to move to Nat and Selena to get us started with the official agenda for today, discussing the, foundation, the foundation's draft annual plan and community feedback period for it. So thank you. Um, thank you, Shani. Uh, my name is Natalia Tymkiv. I'm a Ukrainian Wikipedia serving on the board of trustees since 2016. I'm the chair of the board since 2021. And I am going actually to pass uh, on to Selena, who will talk a bit about the um, draft annual plan that is being discussed now and tomorrow is the last day to give the feedback. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate that this is still a draft and your feedback is welcome and uh, we are going to do uh, a lot of still uh, 
conversations uh, based on the feedback that we receive. Uh, the uh, annual plan is supposed to be approved uh, on the, uh, during the board meeting in June. Um, Selena, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nat. And uh, my name is Selena Deckelman. I am the uh, Chief Product and Technology Officer for the Wikimedia Foundation, and I've been here since uh, August 2022. Um, so in terms of the draft plan itself, there's a host of things that are different. Um, and the first thing I wanted to highlight is that the plan has increased transparency, particularly around finances. Um, and the if you look at the plan, the, the draft plan, the finances section includes our fundraising models, revenue streams, and expense reduction practices. Um, in the foundation details section of the draft plan, we're sharing budget breakdowns, um, department level objectives, and information about the foundation's global employee benefits, our compensation principles, and increased visibility for executive compensation. Uh, the foundation has been long committed to openness and transparency, and this latest version of the annual plan, it represents an important step forward in this area. Um, and in addition to the annual plan, we will also publish details about our financials and our budget uh, in several other places, including in the Forum 990 that the foundation published last week. Uh, another way that the year's plan is different is the focused engagement on product and technology priorities, which I care a lot about and have been working really closely with a number of people on getting published. Um, so product and technology are taking center stage in this year's annual plan. And the departments published early stage, a early stage draft in February about their intended work areas, which we called buckets, um, which inspired lots of bucket memes uh, for the coming year. And the first bucket is wiki experiences. This is about ensuring that we continuously improve the experience of volunteer editors and editors with extended rights, which is inclusive of admins, stewards, patrollers, and moderators of all kinds, and you know, some sometimes people use uh, functionaries to describe these folks. The second bucket is signals and data services, which describes the work to collect, store, and provide analytics and machine learning capabilities for Wiki Experiences data and metadata. And we're going to use that data to improve contributor experiences empower communities to create and share free knowledge and develop what we refer to as at scale data products and services, meaning that we're providing services to a very large number of people um, globally. And finally, we have the future audiences bucket, which is about exploring ways of reaching new free knowledge users and contributors beyond our existing movement. So as discussions evolved, we also, also published draft objectives and key results to make this work measurable. And these are being discussed in a series of community focus groups to further refine the intended work. And you'll find information about the buckets and how we're planning to measure success on the goals page of the annual plan draft on Meta. And there's a link right there <clears throat> in the chat. Um, and we've held discussions on the buckets, on measurements, and on external trends that could impact our work over the next year on Wiki and in community calls. And I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about these areas. So um, in terms of the on Wiki engagement, for the first time ever, we made translated copies of the annual plan summary available on local language Wikipedias. And this is an effort to bring discussions to where volunteers are already are. Um, translated summaries have been posted locally in over 30 wiki pages where community members can engage and ask questions in their own languages. We also have the full annual plan translated, it's a draft still, but <laughs> will become not draft, into 10 languages on MetaWiki, on the MetaWiki homepage, where the foundation staff are answering questions on the talk page. 
Um, the annual plan summary is translated into an additional 17 languages and posted locally on as many village pumps. So there's content currently in 27 languages. In terms of on wiki feedback, we're hearing engagement across a variety of topics, and those include machine learning, technical collaboration, the foundation's approach to budget savings and layoffs, our environmental footprint, our work on equity topics, the influence of China in the free knowledge movement, and the language around how we describe different types of users. This engagement is primarily in English on the MetaWiki page, although we are monitoring across languages on multiple channels. And we've gotten feedback this year that the plan feels more thorough and transparent than in years past. So we hope to keep building on this model because I, I feel there's always room for improvement. Um, in terms of the community calls that we've held, this process began in February um, at the last of these uh, conversations with the trustees. And then in late March, there was a community call about external trends, focusing on the opportunities and challenges in the AI space. Over 100 people attended that call and requested ongoing conversations on this topic. We're hoping to work with communities to alternate hosting more regular calls about AI and its potential impacts on Wikimedia. Following that external trends call, we hosted, or sorry, we joined four additional community calls where affiliates and community members shared their plans for the coming year with us. So our intention here was to do two-way planning. Um, and we got to talk about how best to draft um, our plan with the rest of the movement. We've also run four community focus groups on topics in product and technology. There have been over 600 participants across all of these calls, and we were so happy to see so much interest and engagement. You know, our plan will definitely be stronger thanks to everyone who came and contributed to the discussions. Some of the key themes that came up in these calls included working with affiliates, addressing the gender gap, access to foundation grants, support for copyrights, IP blocks, and how support will be divided and delivered to the different Wikimedia projects. In our product and technology focus groups, there's been particular attention around the topics of moderator workflows, IP blocks, and community technical support. So the feedback period for the annual plan closes tomorrow, May 19th, after a month of open discussion, and in the coming weeks, Foundation staff will post a translated feedback summary on the meta page that captures the major recommended changes to the annual plan, which were heard across the community channels. And this feedback will then shape our finalized annual plan, which will be sent to the full board for approval in late June and published in early July. And at this point, I think we are turning to some pre-submitted question and answer. Yeah, thanks, Selena. Um, yeah, so we have um, some pre-submitted questions on the topic of the annual plan, as well as the foundation's financials more generally. Um, before I get to the pre-submitted questions, I just wanted to actually take a, a live question or two. We have one live question from the YouTube chat. Um, and I'd also encourage if anybody wants to ask a live question here in the Zoom room, um, feel free to raise your hand and we'll pass you the mic. Um, but I'll start with this live question from YouTube. Um, I would like to know the trustee's characterization of the, the growth of executive compensation and whether they think reducing it to historical levels is preferable to layoffs. Um, hello, I think I can take this question. So. Um... Um, the numbers, if you just look at them as numbers, can seem really big, but uh, they are also very different if you look at uh, the same numbers for the uh, salary in the USA, or if you are somebody like I am from Ukraine, or if you are somebody from uh, Europe. Um, we are uh, looking, uh, like we are building our compensation levels based on data. Um, so we are trying, uh, like, uh, there is data across the USA because we are um, 
the American-based organization, and B, we still need to balance. We need to be able to have people working for us, uh, have um, uh, graceful, <laughs> uh, not another word, sorry, um, like a normal uh, way of uh, taking care of their family, of being able to earn money, but also being able to, good, to do good for the, uh, for the movement, for the humanity. Uh, if you will, uh, at large. So we are not basing our um, compensation details or like, oh yeah, okay, uh, we have more money, then we are going to give uh, uh, bigger salaries. We have less money, then we are going to do uh, something else. Uh, like we are going to reduce people's salaries. We are looking every year, we are looking at the data. We are uh, also having rules that we are not um, the, the data is that we are using, we are not uh, going for the maximum. It's like 75% of the bandwidth of what the USA uh, executives uh, uh, are receiving. So it's it's not, uh, there is also no way of returning back to historical unless we actually start um, uh, a point or uh, taking, uh, uh, no, sorry, hiring people who are really rich and they can just allow to be philanthropic and you know not receiving salaries, uh, but that's uh, uh, I, I think it's also not sustainable uh, to like uh, just expect that rich people who are able not to pay for the uh, or don't need to care for their bread uh, in the morning can just come and work for us. Um, so I don't think that this is sustainable and something that we can do. We just like um, uh, can return to what was a few years back taking into account even the economical situation. Um, but that's, that's the thing. We are not basing uh, the salaries on uh, whether we are fundraising more or less money. We are using data for that. Existing in the countries where we are hiring and of course in the USA where we are based. Thank you for that answer, Nat. Um, great. So. I will move then, if we don't have anything uh, immediate in the Zoom chat, I will move to a question that was sent to the askcac at wikimedia.org address ahead of time. This question is about the foundation's new severance policy. Um, the severance policy is mentioned in the annual plan. It also was mentioned um, on a, in a post published on DIFF last month. I think we can probably share the link to that DIFF post here in the chat. Thank you, Lisa, that's great. Um, so this question may be for Mariana, since I know that you helped shepherd um, the severance, the creation of this new severance policy. It's a few questions, has a few parts, so bear with me. Um, the first part of the question is, is the one month of severance pay entirely based on the last month's salary, the last year or previous years? That's the first piece. Um, will this policy affect severances for executives? And then there's a separate piece about exceptions to the severance policy because it, in the annual plan, it does mention that there may be exceptions to this policy. So in terms of the exceptions, um, for staff that are exceptions, are there particular staff members that are able to negotiate exceptions when they join the foundation? Do they negotiate their exception when they depart? Or is it something that can be discussed during their tenure? And then finally, how many staff are considered exceptions and will there be a maximum number of exceptions? So Mariana, feel free to tackle that however you want and we can uh, repeat some of that question if need be. Thank you, Elena. Um, my name is Mariana Iskander. I'm the CEO at the Wikimedia Foundation and very happy uh, to be in the Zoom room with many familiar faces and um, glad to see we've got folks joining us on YouTube. I do have all the parts of the question, so uh, I do intend to try to answer um, all the separate pieces. And Florence, I know you submitted some of these questions and you're here, so I will pause if I haven't answered your questions at the end and just make sure that you feel like um, the questions you submitted did, did get answered. I just want to maybe take a step back uh, and offer a bit of background and context and then try to work through uh, the different components of um, the question. So it's important, I think, to recognize that um, this was done as part of a holistic effort to look at our approach to staff 
across the Wikimedia Foundation. This is 50 plus separate countries, as well as many jurisdictions within the United States. And the idea was to harmonize where possible the approach that we would take in the US and in other countries. This was called our global guidelines. The amount of complexity that was involved in trying to harmonize all of these policies took over a year. And we have been communicating about that in a series of diff blog posts, the latest of which Lisa put into uh, the chat, but there were two uh, that preceded that as well. So I just want to try to provide um, some holistic context for how the severance policy um, came to be. I also want to spend a minute on what the intentions were behind setting the policy, and that was to communicate uh, a standard to staff at all levels, including senior leadership. The idea of trying to, uh, as I said, put guidelines in place, but knowing, which I know many of you can appreciate, it's impossible to predict all future possibilities or legal developments at a time that a policy is written. And that's why we have introduced these as guidelines that will need to be reviewed regularly. To get into some of the specific questions that were asked, the severance policy does contemplate that the one month is based on the last month of paid salary to answer that question. What I can say is that the policy is, it's still too new to comment on why there might be exceptions and what those might be. I think if I tried to anticipate, they may relate to local laws and requirements. We are working with uh, employment legislation and regulations across a lot of jurisdictions. And so that makes standardizing uh, very difficult across the context of all staff at the foundation. It could be unique circumstances that were difficult to imagine at the time that the policy was devised. What I can say is the purpose of the exceptions clause is to anticipate exceptions, not, not to create a loophole. The last thing that I wanted to, to comment on in terms of the specific questions, um, and again, if you haven't had a chance to look at the details, the diff post does provide um, a bit more detail on the the policy language itself. It does contemplate already a natural limit of nine months. We have staff at the foundation whose tenures exceed that uh, in number of years. And the thing that I would say um, in closing is that it's just, it's difficult to predict in advance every possible circumstance in which an HR matter may need to be addressed. And what I hope that you're taking from this is uh, a very clear intent to standardize practices where we can and to create exceptions processes, which is quite common in HR related matters uh, across the board and in all organizations. We'll continue to review the global guidelines as they come into, into, into sort of lived practice as well. Thank you, Mariana, for all that context about how the policy came to be what the future will be for the policy. Um, if we have any follow-up questions about that severance policy, feel free to add those in the chat. We're happy to take those. Um, the next one is uh, another pre-submitted question that's probably also for Mariana. Um, that question is about uh, donations on behalf of foundation staff to the foundation itself. Is there an incentive system in place to invite foundation staff to make donations to the foundation or to other Wikimedia entities, such as doubling their donations? Thanks for the question. I think that many of you know that our uh, staff participate and contribute to the movement in a wide range of ways already. There is not a specific program in place uh, uh, to answer the question directly, but we do have some staff who choose to be donors uh, of their own accord and, and, and give monetary donations to the foundation. Thank you. Um, let's go to another pre-submitted question. 
Um, this one has to do with uh, severance packages that were disclosed as part of the Form 990. I think a few of our speakers today have mentioned that the Foundation's Form 990 was just released for this year. The Form 990, again, is a um, document required by uh, the U.S. government in order for the Foundation to be able to keep its um, nonprofit status, its 501c3 status. Um, and in that, in the Form 990, there were uh, there was information about a number of severances uh, for for um, sea levels that departed the foundation. So this question, I think, could probably go to Nat. Who approved these severance packages, and when were they approved? Um, is there a way to look at previous board resolutions to find information about? who approved them and when. Yeah, so um, these, as all uh, HR-related uh, issues uh, regarding the CEO, is, of course, the board's approval. So the board approved it. Uh, the uh, HR committee, or now Talent and Culture Committee, are usually involved as a committee from the board in working on these uh, questions. Then they go with a proposal to the board, and then the board needs to vote and approve because the Talent and Culture Committee by itself cannot, of course, uh, pass such a resolution. Uh, because this is HR or sometimes also some legal uh, questions, uh, when uh, there are resolutions um, related to this nature, uh, usually it's personnel, like in, in most cases, uh, they are not published publicly. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation publishes um, uh, all the information that it can publish, uh, but uh, the, uh, the resolutions of this kind are not published. Uh, they are usually kept on the board wiki uh, and with the legal department. So publicly, you won't be able to go and look at that, especially this is a mutual uh, separation agreement and the documents are um, kept confidential. Thank you. Um, we can take, let's see, maybe we'll take one more pre-submitted question at this point and then save the others for the open Q&A at the end. Um, this one is about uh, executive compensation disclosures uh, in this annual plan. So this may be for Mariana or for Selena, um, but it notes that in this year's annual plan, Mariana's and Selena's salaries were disclosed in advance um, because as we discussed, they are disclosed in the form 990, but they were disclosed proactively this year as part of the annual plan. Is this type of disclosure something you're planning to make regular practice? And can you talk a little bit about that? I'm happy to take that question. I mean, I think as we've communicated here, the executive compensation disclosures are already required. And so that is part and parcel, as Elena has said, of a number of forms that the foundation uh, publishes on an annual basis, not just one. I will say that it's not clear that this type of disclosure will be necessary now that it has been disclosed. Um, in future years, but the intent certainly is to continue to use the annual plan as a place to increase visibility, transparency, and accountability um, of information from the foundation, I think, with the intentionality that we, uh, I hope, demonstrated this year. Thank you. With that, let's move for now on to Wiki Celebrate. Um, I'll pass it to Rosie to open this topic. So we'll we'll give the floor to Rosie and Merda to talk about this new initiative to celebrate Wikimedians. Then we'll take some questions on that, and then we'll get back to open Q and A for anybody who has any questions on any topic. Uh, so prepare your questions. Um, Rosie, go for it. Thanks, Elena. Well, we have a lot on our plates as a movement, and you've heard some of that already. Sometimes with everything we're working on or working towards, we forget to celebrate the amazing contributions made by members of our movement every day. So we're kicking off a new initiative to celebrate a different Wikimedian each month, which we're calling Wiki Celebrate. And we have no shortage of wonderful contributors to celebrate. I'm gonna pass it over now to Merdad to share more. Merdad? Perfect. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, as Rosie mentioned, sometimes we do forget to celebrate. Um, my name is Merdad, and I'm from the Movement Communication Team. I'm so excited to introduce you to a relatively new initiative called Wiki Celebrate. Um, it's a lightweight and easy way to celebrate Wikimedians regularly. And as Rosie mentioned, we have no shortage of exceptional and amazing Wikimedians to celebrate in our movement. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, perfect. So Wiki Celebrate focuses in particular on Wikimedians who may not have been previously celebrated, especially longtime editors and contributors. Each month, the celebrated exceptional Wikimedian receives a very limited edition Barnstar, which we'll see in a second, on their user page, a dedicated meta page, a dedicated page on meta, where also you, their friends, their colleagues are welcome to come and add uh, celebratory notes and a diff blog post, as well as social media coverage. Next slide, please. So that's the Barnstar. Uh, click. There should be some nice visual effects there. Okay, perfect. So um, for the first month, we kick things off in the honor of uh, Women's History Month with Penny Richards, uh, a retired teacher that takes pleasure in writing articles and collaborating with folks around the world from the comfort of her home in her pajamas. Uh, Penny has been a major contributor to Wiki Project Women in Red, as well as women's biographies. Um, the hope for Wiki Celebrate was actually to connect Wikimedia celebration with in-person events, especially as the movement returns to in-person events. And so um, for April and in honor of Wiki Conference India, we celebrated Minakshi Nandini, a prolific editor and admin on Malayalam Wikipedia, scientific articles, healthcare, women's biographies, and articles related to history, botanical plants, and paintings are among some of her favorites. Uh, and upcoming, next slide, please. So the celebration continues. For May, we'll be celebrating and collaborating with Hackathon and EduWiki conference organizers. And it doesn't end there. You are warmly invited to nominate Wikimedians that you think should be celebrated as well with an easy nomination form on Meta and the link of that, uh, oh, they've already been shared in the chat. Great, thank you so much. And back to you, Rosie. Thanks so much, Murdad. I think um, I think we're moving back though to you, Elena, right? You've got yeah. some. Yeah, oh. I, could, I could take it. Um, we're gonna see if we get any questions about Wiki Celebrate. Um, let's see if we get any in the YouTube chat or the Zoom chat. One thing that I think may be of interest, uh, Merdad, I know people people know you as uh, coordinating Wikimedian of the Year as well every year. How do you think that Wiki Celebrate is is different or similar? Like, you know, how how does Wiki Celebrate work uh, to complement what you've already been doing and and what the movement's been doing to celebrate people every year at Wikimedian of the Year? Great, thank you. Um... Well, actually, this idea for Wiki Celebrate comes from the movement. Uh, last year, um, as you may know, about three years ago, we kind of reimagined Wikimedia of the Year. We added more categories. We started celebrating newcomers, media contributors, tech contributors. Uh, we created a category called Wikimedia Wikimedia Laureate for old time and established contributors. And this was received very well. We were able to cover regions um, and folks that we had never celebrated before. Last year, we got some great feedback, and one was, how can we keep celebrating more often, more regularly? How can we also connect them to different regional events? Because sometimes people want to celebrate someone in their region. And so that's where the idea of Wiki Celebrate came about. Um, it's, it's easy to do, lightweight, um, and it kind of connects the, the virtual and the in-person gap. I think uh, Wikimedia Note there is still happening, and this year it'll actually go in person again in uh, Singapore, which I'm really excited about, and of course, uh, coming to you live from Singapore again. Uh, but Wiki Celebrate goes on every month, so please nominate. Um, and as regional events and thematic events happen too, we'll be connecting with them so we can keep celebrating each other because, like Rosie mentioned, we get so caught up in our work and we um, forget to bring it back to where it matters, which is contributions of 
thousands of volunteers over 20 years. Amazing, thank you. Exciting to see more attention being drawn to all of the diverse contributions that we see around the movement every single day. So really cool initiative. Um, okay, if we don't have any questions from the chats, let me just check really quickly on that. Then I think we can move to open Q&A um, and uh, yeah. Get back, we have some more questions left about the annual plan, a couple of questions about the Form 990. Um, and of course, if any of you have questions about any other topics, feel free to drop them in chat as we go. Um, let's turn to uh, AI and machine learning. Selena, you mentioned that this came up um, in a number of community discussions and that there was also that external trends call um, that we hosted, uh, I think it was last month. So wondering how the foundation plans to work on AI and machine learning under this annual plan. Yeah, thanks for that question. Again, my name is Selena Deckelman. I'm the Chief Product and Technology Officer. Um, so uh, in, in this annual plan, uh, because we had the bucket structure um, design, and then when this work came up, it, we found there was actually this really nice um, uh, ability for us to say, oh, like where 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 does this work naturally um, fit in with our upcoming plans? And it, to to the teams, it very clearly fit into the future audiences work. Um, and as we said in our draft plan, we uh, expect for future audiences work to represent about five percent of our overall effort. Um, and you know, as we can see that, you know, the use of generative AI in society is expanding pretty rapidly, you know, and our content is already being used in ChatGPT and other AI assistants. Um, we're interested in, in exploring and having some pilots in this area. So our goals are really going to be all about testing and learning at this time. Um, and, you know, and that's because the change, like I said, is just happening so fast. Um, we're we're going to need to learn a lot rather than making some large new investment in any one particular area. Uh, so uh, we, you know, and we also understand that the topic of AI is one that's inspiring a lot of strong views. And that makes sense. It's very consequential and relevant, you know, to our communities, what happens in the development of this technology. Uh, and we're actively looking for volunteers who are interested in being thought partners to help shape our work going forward. So if you are interested, uh, please send an email and we can drop this into the chat to future audiences at wikimedia.org. And I think that's, I guess, I, I guess like one more thing there um, is just thinking about the question. There was this, um, I think I should also say that machine learning has been part of our work for quite a long time. And, um, and I, you know, we have a team um, that at one point was called the scoring team and is now the machine learning team. Um, and then even in the earliest days, we had uh, bots that were machine learning assisted bots that were helping us um, watch and, and moderate content. Uh, and so that work, it fits under the signals and data services bucket of our product and technology priorities. Um, and we're, you know, we're going to continue providing the same capabilities that we've provided, you know, in, in recent years to volunteers and staff. So for example, that ML work, it supports aspects of growth and suggested edits. Um, and the team is also working on prototypes to inve uh, investigate ML powered interfaces that you know support the work of the future audiences bucket. So that's like the full the full answer. Thanks. We have a quick follow up on that from the chat here in Zoom. Will Wikimedia have its own Chat GPT? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, if we if we did, I'll just say I think it it would probably be a little bit different. I think it's really interesting um, to think about, and you know the opportunity to learn about large language models and whether um, training our own model like fits into our world, I think is interesting. I also think that the knowledge as a service vision, uh, you know, 
some of the things that we already do fits really well um, into us providing data to other, you know, to the large language models, exactly how we do that, it might require some changes, honestly, to our infrastructure. So that as we're kind of exploring the ML powered interfaces, you know, with our team, we're kind of looking at does the technology and infrastructure that we have today, does it support scaling, you know, asking those questions and kind of exploring, like, do we need to make that better? And how? Um, and then, you know, and I think there's some other opportunities just to make, you know, prototypes um, and and kind of inspire, you know, the folks that we have here. We have we have a lot of really great prototype engineers and prototype product managers um, at the foundation who get really excited about opportunities like this. So we're just taking, you know, taking that opportunity to look in a couple key areas and you know, maybe you'll see more prototypes from us and you'll see that like some of our staff have already been like posting their own blog posts about mashups, you know, just using existing APIs, which I think is a great way for us to kind of explore the space and kind of see the limits of what we have today and, you know, what, what we might need to improve. Thank you. Um, kind of in line with that question, uh, but more broadly about the product and tech work happening under this year's annual plan. Um, there's a question about, so you mentioned focus groups, um, other community calls on wiki feedback being gathered. What has changed in the annual plan as a result of this community feedback? So what can community members expect from like the first draft to then is different in the final draft based on the information that you've got from community members in this process so far? Yeah, this is a great question. And um, there's there's a group that's trying to collect like a comprehensive list of this and we'll be sharing that um, you know, on Wiki once, you know, once we've finished with the the collection tomorrow. So you got one more day to to get your um comments and questions and suggestions in. Uh and just this morning, my time, we were talking about commons. And some of the um, issues that we at the foundation see and some of the issues that community, different community members and different communities have raised um, around moderation. And initially, uh, we had targeted uh, licensing issues and managing licensing issues that have kind of grown in a queue that we have visibility in at the foundation. Um, we proposed that to the community and through these community conversations, um, the folks attending those actually propose a different way <laughs> and, a, and a different set of goals. So I think that's like um, one like very clear example where we shifted from just improving an existing, you know, um, basically like a patroller workflow to looking at, you know, are there ways that we can manage the intake of images and provide feedback to people at that stage and try to reduce the flow of um, of images that need to be reviewed overall. So I, I think that's like one example that I have, I have lots of other ones, but I just say that we're planning to share that um, as like a whole report at the end. Thanks for the question. Wonderful, thanks so much. Um, next question about the annual plan has to do with grants. Um, so yeah, just general question, what is happening with grants under the next annual plan, given especially the current financial situation of the foundation? Maybe Mariana, do you want to take this one? Sure. And um, I, I might ask for help because I don't want to uh, misstate any of the specifics, but the annual plan document has a section on the finances in which there is specific language related to the grants program. The headline message is that the grants budget is increasing, even though the foundation's overall budget uh, is decreasing because we have uh, made cuts in other areas. There have been questions during this open feedback period about specific grant programs that I know have been asked and answered um, in some of the meta pages. And so I'd prefer to point people to some of the specifics, but the general headline message is that the grants budget has increased in this year. Thank you. 
in a similar line of questioning, um, we have a question about what's going to happen with movement strategy um, next year under this annual plan. Um, there's been a little bit of restructuring and maybe movement strategy doesn't sit in the same place in the foundation that it used to. So people are wanting a little more context on that and on the future of movement strategy. Sure, I'm happy to take that as well. I mean, I think it's probably not helpful to think of movement strategy as a team. It's the strategy for our movement and for the organization and has to live, you know, in every part of both the foundation and I think uh, our affiliated entities. So some of you may recall that last year, the foundation began the process of centering our annual plan in movement strategy, specifically um, with the strategic direction that was set in 2017 of knowledge equity and knowledge as a service. This year's plan builds on that by being more specific about the movement strategy recommendations and internally the work of applying those across all our teams, product and tech, communications and the like. I have, as a, as a specific matter, been working more directly from the office of the CEO on oh, some, of the, some of the movement strategy uh, components like the uh, engagements the foundations had with the movement charter drafting committee. So the intent really is to make, ensure that movement strategy actually is more embedded both at the CEO level, but certainly uh, in all components and all pieces uh, of the foundation's annual plan and own direction. I hope that helps. Thank you. We have a quote here in chat from Maggie Dennis. Movement strategy is like the air that we breathe. It's all around us getting a lot of love here in the chat. Um, great. Let's, let's see. We have a, a number of questions still left about the annual plan, but I think, I think let's skip quickly to the 990 and then we can uh, wrap with the remaining questions about the annual plan. Um, in the 990, it mentions the concept of a mutual separation agreement with regard to departures of uh, sea levels. And so this person is just wondering, what is a mutual separation agreement? And um, yeah, can you explain that a little bit? I'm not sure if Nat, this one should go to you. Yeah, I can take that. Um, so, um... I don't know if this person asking the question is uh, from the USA or not, but as a foreigner, for me, it was interesting to learn that in the in the USA, uh, uh, people can leave of their own accord. People can be fired when the organization, so to say, wants it. Uh, but then uh, uh, they, there is like no um, policies, or at least it's not on the state level, where there is some by some time. Um, by the state decided that, you know, for example, the rules, you can't just fire a person in Europe, for example, or in Ukraine, at least, you can't just fire somebody without giving them some period of time, unless it's something very serious, uh, criminal. Uh, so there are always like rules um, by the, on the state level. Whereas in organizations in the USA, it's all decided uh, kind of on a more granular level. And mutual separation agreement is just exactly what it is. That's when uh, the individual and the organization decides that this is time to part ways, and they agree that uh, uh, this is what the, it was, is expected from the individual, this is what is expected from the organization, and they agree on the terms of how they separate. Um, I'm sure that you can find some official um, term somewhere on Wikipedia, maybe even. Uh, but uh, this is like in human speak. That's exactly when uh, organizations and individuals decide together uh, that they are parting ways. Thank you. All right, let's do the last question that we have um, about the foundation's finances. Um, this is uh, about the, let's see, we have disclosures about the foundation's finances in the form 990. 
Um, it was also mentioned today that disclosures happen in the annual plan and other places. What are the other places? Where are there more? Where is there more information about the foundation's finances beyond uh, the annual plan and the form 990? Is there anything else? Nat, do you want to take this one? Yes. So um, the annual plan is just what it is. It's a plan, what is expected to be done and with the resources that is expected to be done, to, 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 to be received uh, for that work, that work to happen. Uh, Form 990 gives a bit of a different perspective because the time terms uh, are different. And our annual plan is for the uh, uh, year that starts in July and ends in June, whereas the Form 990 for most uh, things provides a um, calendar year. But um, annual annual reports would be the information where you can actually look up what the financials for the year or actual uh, year were. Not the plan, but you know, like re uh, real uh, funds, real resources that were spent or received. Um, so that's also another place to look for financials. Lynn, I'm just going to observe that a few links in the chat have also been added to amplify uh, to Nat's answer. Obviously, we issue financial reports every year. Charity Navigator, which is another source that publishes on an annual basis various information about the foundation's financials. So just wanted to highlight some of what was in the chat in, as well. Thank you. And if we can make sure that those links also make it to YouTube, that would be wonderful. Let's get back to the annual plan then. Uh, just a few questions left. So um, in the annual plan section about measuring progress, one of the top level goals doesn't have a metric yet. Um, that's the section for effectiveness, ensure our long-term sustainability by improving how the foundation operates and scales. It says in the annual draft plan that uh, departments will publish their approaches separately on this. So wondering if you could speak about the process and timeline for generating metrics around this goal. I'm happy to take that one. I mean, I think that this is uh, evidence that the plan genuinely is draft and it's ongoing work. This is a precise topic that uh, work is underway now. So I would make a couple of observations. We made earlier reference to uh, external benchmarks that the foundation uses. Char Charity Navigator is one. One of those metrics is um, the amount of budget spent on programmatic expenses. And although I'm aware that the compensation and severance payments are the main focus of the Form 990, I do want to highlight there are other schedules and other information in the Form 990. And one of those was that in the 2021 year, the foundation's programmatic expenses uh, increased by four percentage points to 77%. That is one metric that can be used to measure uh, effectiveness. And in addition to that, having departments share their work as departments is part of what's contemplated, but we're trying hard to ensure that the work that we share out is not siloed and reported across departments. That's the intent of having these foundation level objectives as well. Thank you so much. Um, Let's talk about uh, specific elements of the annual plan. Um, Selena, you mentioned that moderator workflows came up in your discussions with community members around uh, the plan for this year. Um, can you talk more about that and how that may be integrated in our work for the upcoming year? Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks for this question. Hi, I'm Selena again. Um, so the kinds of moderator workflows that we're thinking about are coming from um, the combination of work that was already in progress and problems that we've identified. Like for example, we have to move this IP masking project forward, which means that we're gonna change the way that IP addresses 
like make them not as visible um, as they used to be, not not visible to the public and and visible to um, editors with advanced rights. And so that has um, some consequences in terms of the tooling. So that's like an example of an area where we're um, collaborating with community on and have been for quite a long time and prioritizing specific work to improve uh, improve there. Um, another area that um, we're thinking about uh, is community configuration. So there's a number of features that we've developed that through testing, we know increase the number of new editors that come in. And what we've heard is that when we increase the number of new editors that um, come onto any wiki, that increases the burden for the existing <laughs> editors to, um, you know, review or sometimes, you know, manage um, either lower quality or, you know, just, just, you know, there's more people. And so you, sometimes you just have to have more conversations. So giving um, communities the opportunity to manage that and figure out, you know, should we turn this feature on? How many people have exposure to it? Should we turn it off? Giving more of that control um, to local wikis is, is something we're working on. And the, the name for that is community configuration. Um, uh, another area that uh, Moderator Tools is looking at specifically is um, abuse filter. You know, and are there ways that we can augment that with, um, you know, some additional machine learning models um, or, you know, just UX improvements? And I have a longer list there. So, so that's three examples. And what you'll see in the updated plan, we have these things, we call them um, hypotheses. And each one of these are our statements about the outcome that we're trying to achieve with the work of, you know, a team or, or um, a larger group that's working together. And um, through that, what we're doing is we're attaching different kinds of measurements or qualitative, you know, review to say, did we have the impact that we wanted to have with the work that we did? So, so that's what you'll see um, as we kind of come to the end of the planning cycle for both product and tech departments. Thanks. Thank you. And so in terms of uh, also planning for, for the next year and allocation of resources, we have a question about, um, so you mentioned that uh, part of the community conversations that you had were around um, how to divide resources amongst different Wikimedia projects. Did you get any particular insight on that from community conversations? And what is what is the plan for making that determination over the next year? Yeah, thanks for this question. So um, I would say, you know, we're still, I'm not totally done with like the feedback cycle. So I, I don't think I have, um, I don't have like a complete picture across all of the various teams. So I'll just say, you know, we are, we are still kind of compiling that and reviewing it. Um, you know, we're definitely investing, continuing to invest in, you know, all of the Wikipedia's um, and doing infrastructure work that improves the, you know, quality of the software across all of them. Um, so that investment in MediaWiki, it affects basically every um, project. Uh, and there's also infrastructure projects that we do, like um, investing in Kubernetes and the way that we deploy the software. And so improvements there, again, they they affect and improve things for um, all of the projects at the same time. Um, a specific investment that we are making in the coming fiscal year is in commons. And we're shifting the work of like one particular team over to, to commons. Whereas previously we were working primarily with um, uh, contractors like on the engineering side and, and we had uh, just a partial <laughs> uh, product manager assignment. So, so we're making some shifts there. Um, Overall, you know, I would say that the feedback we were looking at is does the high level allocation of like 5% ish for future audiences, you know, 30% ish for um, the signals and data services bucket and 50% ish for the um, 
wiki experiences bucket, does that make sense to everyone? I think over time we'll be able to kind of refine that, but I think the, the goal this year was just to kind of get into that starting position and start to talk about things in terms of our investment in, you know, like these infrastructure things that I'm talking about that improve things for everyone, investment in data, um, investment in improving the core user experience, which is part, you know, of the, the, um, our, our movement strategy, and then making sure that we're continuing to have some investment in that very far future looking and experimental space with the future audiences. So, so I'd say that, you know, from my perspective, we did achieve getting feedback on that. And then as far as the more specific areas, um, you know, I, I would say I just need a little more time to process all the information that we've received about that for me to say. Thanks, Selena. So uh, I have a final question about the annual plan. And if we don't get any more questions in chat, we can wrap, but happy to take any questions that people have want to drop in chat. Um, this was your first uh, time, Selena, going through the annual planning process with the foundation and your work totally took center stage, which is really exciting. Um, so wondering, and this question goes for Selena as well as Mariana, who this was your second right time going through this process uh, with the foundation. Can each of you um, talk about some of the principles that guided your work on the annual plan and what you were hoping to bring to the process? Maybe we'll start with Selena and then go to Mariana. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you so much for this uh, this question. Opportunity to reflect. Uh, so I I think for me um, the the grounding in talking about um, you know, what our mission is and what we're here to do. That was like a foundational principle for me. So, um, there are two things that are always top of mind for me on the, you know, technology and product front. Um, one is supporting our volunteers who produce, you know, the free knowledge that we then are able to distribute you know, through the technology infrastructure that we've been maintaining for many years now. And um, so, so first focusing on, are we serving the needs as much as we possibly can of the volunteers? And there were clear gaps. So um, helping everybody understand the, you know, what my priorities are for supporting volunteers, you know, that, that was like a really important first step. Uh, and then um, looking at the infrastructure that we're using to, dis, you know, to share um, this information and to support sharing through the website, but also other means, um, is that healthy? <laughs> and then how do we determine whether it's healthy or not? So, so we have to start measuring. Um, so that's, you know, at the heart of all of the questions that I asked and, and the people that I was working with like how they were doing their work. Um, and then I would say the other piece of it was just having really clear deadlines and, <laughs> and then being flexible, you know, at certain points when we needed to adjust them. But, um, and that was really uh, the work of many, many people making sure that, um, you know, we were establishing clear timelines for folks that we weren't asking for, uh, people to make really big decisions about work that was happening in the coming year, you know, on one or two day timelines, we really gave them several months to, first of all, think about the direction, you know, first of all, let's like support volunteers in the, the right ways. And then second, let's make sure this infrastructure that we have is very healthy um, or more healthy, work toward more health. Um, and from there, start to think about the work that, that you might do. And so I think giving people that time to think that through, you know, nothing's perfect. There's always like room to improve, but I, I have gotten feedback that people felt that the process, you know, there was two-way planning with the community. There was also like a good, healthy back and forth, you know, between like management direction and ICs being able to like individual contributors being able to think about and propose, um, work. So, yeah, I, I feel pretty good about that. And I also see areas to improve and, and folks are already kind of giving me feedback in that direction and thinking about next year. Also good that they have like mental bandwidth, you know, to, to share their reflections. 
but yeah, I, I think that that's it, you know, focus on, you know, what's, what's most important and let people know, and then make sure that we have like a really good, you know, timeline so that people get that opportunity to do like the good deep thinking and reflection that they need to do to form a new plan. Yeah. So Mariana. <laughs> well, I'll keep uh, my response brief just to be additive to what Selena has said. I mean, a lot of my reflections actually come from some of the earlier questions and comments. So I appreciate a chance to be able to reflect on it. You know, I think that aligning the foundation's planning uh, directly to movement strategy has helped a lot. I mean, that is building off the past, but being able to ensure that that's quite explicit and specific, clarifying our metrics, which is ongoing work. But again, I see a uh, real opportunity for some of that clarity from last year to this year. I think we have been really trying to take this principle of two-way planning seriously in our, not just the feedback period. So if some of you joined any of the community calls or even some of the engagement on Wiki, trying to ensure that the foundation is also planning against the work that is being done by community volunteer communities, affiliates, and, and others as well. I feel uh, the need to really repeat the observation uh, that was made in the presentation, which is bringing multilingualism uh, much more forcefully into our planning work. So having uh, the, the plan available in parts in 27 languages also feels like um, a kind of momentum in recognizing the need for more multilingualism and the important conversations that we're having. And maybe the last point, which may not be as visible um, to our uh, volunteer communities is how much internal work uh, is happening to try to plan with a one foundation approach um, and not have different teams, I think to Selena's point, uh, feel like they're trying to manage or figure things out uh, on their own, but a much more coordinated and hopefully less siloed. All of these things can continue to be improved over time, which is why this feedback period has been so meaningful and so important that we are hearing on Wiki, in calls, whatever ways, on Village Pumps, whatever ways are easiest for, for people to engage with us. And certainly the biggest change for me is last year we didn't have Selena, so it's been a lot easier to do the product and tech planning this year than it was uh, last year, just in terms of um, kind of clarity of leadership. Thank you both so much for those reflections. I think that's a really nice note to end on. Um, I will pass it to uh, Rosie in a second to close. I just want to thank everybody for joining our call today. and. Um, the recording, again, is immediately available on the YouTube link, and it will be up on Commons shortly. The notes will be posted to the meta page uh, shortly as well. If you enjoyed this call and you want to get um, automatic invitations, every time we do this with the Zoom link uh, right in your inbox, feel free to write us at askcac at wikimedia.org, um, and we can add you to the list to receive those links um, and event reminders ahead of time. Um, Rosie, would you like to, to bring us out? Sure, thanks for that, Elena. I wanna thank everyone who's on this call for joining us, for making the time to participate. I know we have a few more trustees who are on this call that uh, maybe didn't um, speak yet. And if they're able to and wish to, um, introduce themselves, this would be an opportunity to do so. I don't know if we even did mic checks for them, but I see Raju, I see Ezra. And if you have the inclination, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Otherwise, I'll do a wrap up. Thanks, Rosie. Hi, everyone. Raju Narisati. I'm a appointed trustee. I've been on the board for about six years now, and I'm on the audit committee and the talent and culture committee. Hi everyone, um, Esra here, and I have been on the board um, for a little over five years, and I am um, currently the chair of the uh, Product and Technology Committee. Thank you both, thank you all. Um, as usual, don't go away. We're gonna be running a poll next to see how you felt about this call. We've got a new question in there, so please take a moment to respond to the poll. You can also email your feedback to askcac at wikimedia.org. 
here comes the poll now. It's on Mentimeter. Please take a moment to take a look at that and give your opinion. I will and, also note that we've been told that the Zoom, the YouTube is about a five minute delay. So um, those of you that are watching on YouTube, please still vote. We will still look at this poll after the call closes. If we're not here still on Zoom, we're still looking at the poll. So please take a moment to vote whether you are here in Zoom or uh, watching five minutes delayed on YouTube. Again, I'd like to thank everyone who's joined us today. And I hope to see some of you in person or online at Wikimania in August. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.